welcome. Um, uh, this talk is not about me. It's not really a talk, even in the normal sense. It is a audience-driven, choose-your-own-adventure, so get ready to participate. Um, and yeah, there we go. All right, so chapter one. Uh, the following depicts true events. Only the names have been changed. Viewer discretion is advised. Your cruise ship has crashed into a reef. Luckily, you swim to the shore, the shore of a nearby deserted island. All you have is two weeks worth of rations and high quality podcasting equipment. <laughs> Rescue is impossible. The reef is just too powerful. A mysterious benefactor will airdrop you supplies if you produce a bi-weekly podcast about the future of open source software. Remember, this talk isn't about me. Naturally, you agree. After a few months, you've gained a small following. Your friend and colleague, Fernando Perez, discreetly emails you to point out that all of the podcast guests have been white men. Do you stop podcasting in shame? Keep podcasting the way you have been, or three, check your privilege. Four. There's no four. Three. Three. What? We've got a one? I think I saw a one. Three. Three? Oh, you guys are... No fun. All right. You check your privilege. Oh, no. Don't touch it. Don't, don't, I won't touch the... Don't look at it. Privilege. I'm checking my HDMI right now. <laughs> Come on. Is it? This took a long time to boot up. Would it be a very interactive adventure on YouTube? Uh, yeah, it could be. It, there, there are. This is a game you can play later. So. Um, this is very interactive. No, it's not. <laughs> it really, it really. The, all right, now I'm going to leave it alone, and I hopefully this, nope, that does not work. Okay, so um, you decide to reevaluate your entire approach to podcasting about open source issues. Chapter two. You guys went straight for chapter two already. So good. Um, because you are stuck on this island alone, some of your best tools are, uh, available to you, or some of the best tools available to you are your cunning logic and sharp wit. You decide to survey the island and your podcasting options. I'm sorry, I don't know that for me chapter one is finished because you said check your privilege, but what does that mean? Like what changes are you making? Like what are you doing? 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 What changes are you making? Like what are you doing? 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 Like what are you Walk in the jungle to ponder your friendships, enter the cave to do some journaling, or hike up the volcano to ask for help on Hacker News. Four. 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 I heard a I heard a definitive four. So we're going for it. You seeking help from online discussion forums at the peak of the local volcano, you slip on a treacherous ledge and fall into the lava below. You died. All right, let's, let's respawn, shall we? Uh, because you're stuck on the island alone, you decide to survey the island and your podcasting options. Do you? Four, three, two, one, two. Two. Walk in the jungle to ponder your friendships. Approaching the jungle, you scare four vultures out of a tree. Their callings remind you that you can call on your friends for help. After all, that is what friends are for. Perhaps one of your friends would, would, be able, would be interested in co-hosting with you. Discussion section. How can a co-host help bring a missing perspective to the podcast? And what qualities of a co-host do you want? You've got one minute to chat about it with your new friends next to you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to cut you off a little early. Sorry. Not sorry. You forgot about the tiger hunting you this whole time. Yes, this island has a tiger, obviously. You run back to your hut. Uh, you're stuck on the island alone. You decide to survey the island and your podcasting options. Do you? Four. One. One. We already did four. You can't do four. <laughs> might, yeah. This isn't Markdown, not Twine. I'm not fancy. Um, 
While you're walking on the sandy shore, you realize that you are not truly alone, at least not when it comes to open source diversity and inclusion issues. You are still stranded, of course, you're not getting off that easy, but you can ask the projects themselves about what they are doing to be more inclusive. Discussion section. Uh, what questions can you ask your guests about their diversity and inclusion efforts? How can you help move the conversation? You've got a minute. But probably actually only like 30 or 45 seconds, so let's be honest. That's a minute. So after that minute, you return to your hut. Uh, you know, you're stuck on the island. You've, what? Journaling. Journaling, number three. You enter the cave to do some journaling. <laughs> About puns, perhaps. You approach the entrance to a cave. Around you is a jungle. A small stream flows into the cave. There is a shiny brass lamp nearby. Do you get the lamp or enter the cave? Enter the cave. I heard get the lamp first. Okay, you have a lamp. Do you turn on the lamp or enter the cave? <laughs> I think I'm hearing turn on the lamp. You, <laughs> your lamp is now on. <laughs> We're not dealing with your whatever <laughs> the P stands for, pearl or something. Um, your, your lamp is now on. Not wanting to return to your hut, you enter the cave. The dim light from your lamp reveals a large rocky pit. The pit is easily avoided. You proceed. <laughs> You are in a oop, let me see. Yep, let's. I think that's right. Yeah, you are in a debris-filled room uh, with stuff washed in from the surface. Finally, a nice place to relax. Chapter three. The detritus of previous generations of lost souls pol politely reminds you to blog. <laughs> you decide to blog about open-source diversity issues affecting your podcast. Do you develop a theory? Collect data, plot your results, or write the blog? Yes. Three. I, I saw a three. I saw a th You plot the results. You have no data to plot. While you stare blank at a blank matplotlib figure, the earth itself begins to violently shake. You are crushed. Ah, oh, you're sad about that. That's what should happen. Uh, you're politely reminded to blog. Do you develop a theory, collect data, or write the blog? Yeah. Write the blog, there we go, four. You open up Jupiter, but you have nothing to say and the world's failed to flow. Suddenly the debris-filled room fills with water. You drown. <laughs> oh. uh, you're politely reminded to blog, yada yada. You collect the data. You lack a general theory, so don't know what to look for. Before you can re-examine re your mental framework, your lamp goes out due to a lack of oxygen in the cavern. You suffocate. Aww, yeah, so sad, really. You deserve it. Um, uh, politely reminded to blog. Uh, we find we have to develop a theory. You have to develop a theory. You realize that for an illuminating blog post, you will need a general theory of diversity. You want a tool that is capable of handling many different categories of equality. You also want a tool that can handle many partitions, i.e. beyond simple binary men and women models. Uh, what are the axes of equality that you would like to see discussed and an analyzed? For example, the canonical one, gender. You have a minute. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're moving on. You decide that a generalized entropy inequality measure is just the mathematical tool you are looking for to find here as g equals the natural log of s, the number of partitions, minus the Shannon entropy, which is your old friend, of course, here. Uh, it would sure be great if this was normalized in some way so you didn't have to deal with like the weird bounds on the, on the Shannon entropy. So you defined a normalized metric as one minus the entropy divided by the natural log of S minus this G of P, which is the equality or the distribution basically of inequality in the larger population. So you know whether you're matching the larger population or not. You're pretty, pretty smart. Um, <laughs> The detritus of previous generations of lost souls now sternly reminds you to blog. You have a minimum of data for the, oh, you have a minimum, minimal theory for the, open, uh, for the open source diversity issues affecting your podcast. Do you collect the data, plot your results, or write the blog? Write the, write 
right? The blog is what I heard first. You open up Jupiter, the words fail to flow. Uh, the room fills with water, you drown. Of course. Okay, you're sternly reminded now again. Collect the data, there we go. Your podcast itself inspires you. You decide to look at diversity within NumFocus project leadership. You also decide to look at gender partitioned with female, male, and non-binary, so S equals three, just as our, our case here, or as your case here. So how do you count the project leadership? There are no grad students on this island. You're alone. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what? Coconut crabs. Coconut crabs, that's right. Um, to determine leadership, you use the following algorithm, lacking the graduate students mentioned before. Uh, first, you scrape the project websites. Uh, you use listed steering committee, so as in the case of Jupiter, or core team, as in the case of Condeforge, as the penultimate leadership body. Um, if there's nothing like that listed, uh, you can then go ahead and count co top contributors as determined by those with more than 150 commits in a project, you understand that this has some tyranny of code contribution issues, but it's the best that you can do since they didn't write anything on their website. Um, and you try to be as inclusive as possible, including past members, and you try to get a large, as large of a sample base for each project as possible. And then, of course, you store the results in data.json, obviously. Uh, the detritus of previous generations of lost souls relentlessly reminds you to blog. You have a minimal data set for uh, open source diversity issues affecting your podcast. Do you plot your results or write the blog? <laughs> blog, I heard blog first. <sighs> you have no pretty pictures to put in your blog, so the words fail to flow, the room fills with water, uh, you drown. All right, so you're relentlessly reminded it's time to plot the results. You plot the data. In the waning light of your lamp, you fire up Jupyter, Matplotlib, and your trusty JSON parser. You call plot.barh. You get the Veritas color map, of course. <laughs> the screen flickers. And this is the figure that you come up with. So the results here that you see are measured in inequality, so lower numbers are better. Um, so you can see here that projects like Interact uh, and RopenSci uh, are a lot more equal than projects on the other end of the spectrum, such as NumPy and PyTables. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite know that one. So. Um, so what does this say about our community? And what are the strategies that projects like Interact are employing? And are these applicable to other projects? So you have a couple minutes on the clock, so take it away. Oh yeah, and sorry, I go back to the graph. This is real data, and I've got a, you have a blog post up about this that explains all of it. All right, your two minutes are up. At last, you open a new Jupyter notebook. It's called untitled1.ipynb. <laughs> the words flow freely, your prose is top notch, and your analysis is unassailable. You tweet out a binder link to the world. You cunning dog, you. Yet, yeah, you can't bring yourself to rename the file. <laughs> you proceed. Chapter four. You start your trek back to your hut. After leaving the debris-filled room and avoiding the pit, you exit the cave. As you leave, you hear a loud rumbling, which sounds like gears. Do you hike the volcano to post on Stack Overflow? Search the overgrown, overgrown ruins of dead ideas, or run back to your hut. We'll we'll hike the volcano, won't we? Do you even listen to us? I listen to some of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I also listened to others. Anyway, you died. You saw it. Fine. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oop, sorry. Um, all right. Do you search the overgrown ruins of dead ideas or do you run? I think the consensus is run at this point. Yeah. All right. So you run. Uh, you have decided on the safest option, flee. The vigorous workout makes you think that there are both active and diversity issues and passive ones. Active ones might be where a toxic community and culture prevents and destroys equitable systems. A passive one 
provide, says it has significant biases that prevent agents from making major strides towards equality. Wow, your brain works so well while physically active. You should really run more. <laughs> Discussion, what mechanisms do we have to help address active and passive issues? Got two minutes. All right, your two minutes are up. You arrive back at your hut, safe and sound. The sound of grinding gears has stopped. Odd. It's time to try to get off this island. You proceed. Chapter five. You are sick of podcasting for peanuts. Also, your phone is blowing up with Twitter notifications. Do you check Twitter, update your apps, or keep podcasting? Check Twitter. OK, you check Twitter. Your notebook tweet has gone viral and, of course, started a flame war. You get sucked in and fail to notice the volcano erupting. You are swimming in lava. You died. <laughs> you are sick of podcasting for peanuts. Do you update your apps or keep podcasting? <laughs> update, I heard. You decide to update your apps. A new one catches your eye. Lift Lift is a new drone-based ride-sharing service. Use a pro promo code to order one. As you ascend over open water back to your civilization, a battery catches fire and you plummet into the ocean. Lift Lift is still in beta. You swim back to shore. You're sick of podcasting for peanuts. You are not checking Twitter again. Not doing it. We, you keep podcasting. You have learned to accept your fate and decide to keep podcasting. The equality issues in open source software are not going to disappear overnight. But through active, positive engagement, you realize that you can help build a more welcoming community for everyone. Hey, those mindfulness audiobooks you downloaded seem to be working. The end. Aww. I'm Anthony Skopatz. Oh, thanks, y'all. Pause for applause. <laughs> So thanks for uh, playing that with me and all together here. Um, I'm Anthony Skopatz. I work at Quantsite. Um, we are also spinning out this effort called Fair OSS, where we uh, work on a lot of equality and fairness issues. That's a it's a public benefit company that's meant to be owned by a community of developers such as ourselves. So if you want to learn more about that, go to faiross.com or come talk to me later. Uh, we're just getting started. It'd be great to have you. So uh, yeah. That's it. And if there are any questions, I guess we can take them. Hello. So I don't want to presume anything about your gender or sexual identity, but you are a presenting white man yep. giving a talk about diversity, yep. and I was wondering how you feel about the responsibility of that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, um, but there are things that maybe need to be said about your role in this kind of space, and I would be curious to hear what you have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, so, right. So. When I said at the very beginning that like this talk isn't really it shouldn't it shouldn't be coming from my perspective, right? So that's why I wanted to off I don't want to say offload, but to put this on the community as a whole, right? So I shouldn't be up here speaking about diversity issues on behalf of everyone, especially given you know my historical privilege and and race and everything. Um, so that's why I designed the talk in this way. Um, so that it could help engage and be more of a discussion rather than sort of me coming up and sort of being the sage on stage and, and just talking about the methods that I use and things like that. This is an issue I very deeply care about um, and equality and, and, and fairness and representation I, are things that I've held very deep for a long time. I've given other talks that have been, <laughs> that have dived more into the actual technical bits of this, and I've written other pieces. So if you're interested in those, like, you know, there, there's some other acknowledgement in other in other places. But yeah, that's I didn't want to come here. Uh, this talk talk was very difficult, and I was like kind of a, disappointed when it got accepted in some ways because I didn't want to I didn't want to like have the burden of trying to have to figure this out. So yeah, I don't know. I, I fully acknowledge my position. So. And, and I don't think it's a bad thing.
aware of your privilege and stuff. Yeah. So pretty much a follow-up question. Sure. Uh, I'd be interested to hear from other people in the audience what their solutions were to this problem, if they have any. Yeah, if anyone has like moments that came up in the discussion, now would be a great time to share them. I, would, I didn't know if we'd actually have time to, to share them. So, but please, we can pass the mic around. Got someone over there. Well, I have another question. Oh, so sure. why don't we just take it to Twitter? Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm not actually on Twitter, so maybe we can take it somewhere else. But anyway, my question is about fair OSS, uh, OSS so far, and I was just wondering like, what the structures you guys have put in place. Presumably you've thought about, like it's not just you, you said it's been spun out. So like, I guess who are the founders, um, or just a bit, bit more about it would be really interesting. Yeah, so I, briefly, we're in the process of putting together a board. Um, so I, I want at least three kind of board members, one whose, whose role is to focus on diversity and inclusion if efforts and, and sort of what that means, how you would say like a project or a company or an individual is participating in a fair way in that aspect. Because there's other fairness things to consider, but I want someone whose dedicated role is that. So. Yeah, so we're, so right. So how are we ensuring diversity in the board? Um, yeah, so we haven't, yeah, so the this, there's a lot of ideas there. I don't have time to go into them now. I'm happy to talk to you after. after thank you this very episode. much. All right, thank you.